Hey everybody, welcome back to Play the Game. I'm Daniel, this is Allison, and we have Emma the Office Baby here with us today. Can you say hi? Can you wave hi, Emma? Say hi. She's like, I don't know who I'm waving to. <laughs> uh, you're waving to the camera, yes. Yay. We love the people who come to watch our videos. It is February 1st, which means that it's time to recap everything we played in January. And I know I said that like it's a, a regular segment, but what's life without having goals? We've, we can have goals. Yeah, our goals. goal is to do this on the first of every month. So Emma's going to hang out here. If she gets too loud, we'll cut and come back. But she's just going to dance while we talk about games. <laughs> to make disclosure simple, if it's on your right, their right or left. Right, right. If it's on your right, it's a review copy <laughs> or provided by a publisher for photography or some other project. If it's on your left then we bought it. So review copy or publisher provided, bought with our own money. So there's your disclosure. Emma Grace, hey. I don't know if this is gonna work. It's gonna work. She likes to be up here. She's cut no. off the camera. That's okay. So we're gonna jump right in with the art project from the op. Okay, This art is project. a cooperative resource management game. It is a game that we are kind of divided on. We are, that's, I mean, I've played it a full game twice. You've played mm -hmm. many more times. Right. We've only played with the boys. I love cooperative games, especially when we play as a family, but I found this one boring. And it could have been because of my state of mind. We played at the end of the day, or I was getting over like the, a cold, and right. really just my mind space was really clouded. To <laughs> totally could have been why I was like, Okay, let's do that. Sure. Okay, sure. We're gonna go there and do that. I've got these cards. You know, it just it didn't feel engaging to me. But everyone else that we played with loved it. Yeah. So I'm open to playing more. I would like to play with adults. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think, think I think that's a big part of it. Is it's yeah. It's a very communication is really key. Really thinking through your strategy. So I think playing with kids and only kids is a gives a. Uh, not a great view of the game. So we'll play it a few more times and we'll come back yeah. to it later. I mean, the boys loved it. Yeah. So obviously if it's on the table, I'm going to play it. Yeah. It's not one of those I'm like, mm, I don't want to play that. Yes. So that was sent to the publisher. We'll have more on that when yeah. um, maybe I change my mind. Yeah. We have a meeting during her nap time today, which is why she's joining us to shoot this video. Otherwise, we'd shoot this during nap time. We have a meeting. Okay. A so, game that uh, we're really excited to get yes. in January. I'm mad about this game. Why? I was mad the first time we played it. I'll tell them while you turn the box around. Mm. I have friends that know me well. They were like, hey, Project L is pretty good. You should play it. But I feel like they should have pushed me harder to play it because I absolutely... Michael totally was like, no, this he was is like, a good it's game. Good. You, you should play it. it. I feel like he should have brought it over and sat me down and been like, hey, we're playing Project L because I know you and I know that you're going to love it. It is fantastic. It's one of the most innovative engine builders that I have ever played. It's so different. It's Tetris engine builder board game. Yeah. If I, you like, like spatial it. puzzles, you're going to love it. Yeah, and then um, a local game store posted, upside down too, um, posted that they had the expansions, which is hard to find. Did they just Well, I think they just, it, I think it was just like they posted on Facebook, hey, look what came in today. So I went and bought them. Yeah. Now we Same have Ghost. Day. What's the other one that we have that we haven't played yet? I don't remember. We'll talk about that one when we, when we have it. You sit over here with me a little bit. She is going to be super distracting. Yeah. So, so Ghost Expansion adds some new stuff again. We'll do full reviews. We'll probably do a playthrough of that. Well, this one adds like the black pieces yeah. that can ghost. They can, um, you can change them into different things and they're bigger. I mm -hmm. liked that. Um, different spatial areas. So that yeah. was Project L. I was really excited we got that. Yes. I also have grab. Eye, I have this eye twitch that's driving me crazy. I know you guys can't see it, but it's so it's distracting. Well feel. Oh my gosh. Okay. The fuzzies, just cute little game. You're taking little fuzzy balls off, adding it to the top of the tower, trying to knock it over, or trying not to knock it over. It's just a fun little inexpensive. I think it was like $15. If you have kids, it's a it's a great just filler game to have. Yeah, or you could throw them at people. You can. Which you did to me. You can. Yes, the fuzzies. It's fun. You get tweezers, or you can just use mm. your fingers. Think Tetris. Did you already say that? Think, uh, not Tetris, uh, Jenga. Yeah. But with like... You're craft going with fuzzy balls. Fu fuzzy balls. So, look, I have so many of these craft balls at home. We can make it even bigger. Yes, giant fuzzies. Giant fuzzies. Okay, so I'm going to grab all three of these at the same time. Um, Peyton and I, we did a coffee date last night, and I grabbed a bunch of these. 
I grabbed um, a bunch of these Fox Mind games that I had for photos for Christmas. They were just in my studio. I was like, you know what? We're going to play these. Um, Match Madness Junior, which this was the one we ended our night with. And Peyton was like, oh, my head hurts. It's very thinky, puzzly. Um, <laughs> Okay, so back to having coffee with Peyton. Um, I grabbed these Foxman games out of my studio. I had them for photos, um, for Christmas photos. We played Match Madness Junior, and if you've played Match Madness, this is the Junior version. The first two sets have, it like kind of shows you which ones to use. Um, that was a lot of fun. Peyton said it hurt his brain. It was the last one tonight. We played Don't Rock the Croc, which is a younger game. Mm -hmm. But we enjoyed it. Uh, if you follow our Instagram, I've got a reel of that. And then I like this one because I like the, um, what's the Lucky Duck game with the cats and the shelves? Uh, my Shelfie. My Shelfie. <laughs> it has the My Shelfie and even has the cat. Um, you're balancing. balancing. You're balancing. You're trying to get the books up right. You have cards to say how many books you need. So those were the Fox Mind games that we really, really we had fun with those last night. Yeah. I'll grab that one. Yep. Dice Miner we bought just a couple of days ago. Absolutely love it. It's a cool, like, I, I played five games of the the solo last night. Yeah, they he showed me how to play one of them. Takes five to ten minutes a game for the solo game. The regular game takes about 30 minutes, but you're, just, you're collecting dice, trying to score and manipulate. It's just yeah. a fun... You're drafting from the mountain. Yeah. I really like that yeah. concept. So that's Dice Miner. Yep. Also mm. have Bosk. We played this a few times. This is one of my like favorite games. It's absolutely gorgeous. He and played it's it, just... and it was like he wouldn't stop talking yeah. about it. I mean, I enjoyed it too, but man... You I, I just yes, love I love the it. puzzle of this game. It's we'll beautiful. have we'll have more about it, but it's it's beautiful. Yeah. It's it's got to be like it needs to be for you. I can see how some people don't like it, but I just I fell in love with it. I, I love it's this so game. It's so thematic. It is, and it's just you play through one round of all four seasons. It's not going back and forth and back and forth. You plant your trees, you grow your trees. The wind comes in, it blows the leaves, and you score for ways. area control. It's, just, it's, it's, really it's so fun. Okay, so I'm going to do a few. So Flash 10. Yeah. This one we got from DeVere. Mm -hmm. um, this was fun. Yeah, it was. Explain this one because I, I remember enjoying it, but it's been a minute since we played that one. Everyone gets a hand of cards. There's a deck of cards in the middle, and you are at the same time drawing a card, laying it on top, and trying to get in a sequence of just a... a an ascending sequence of cards. That's right. And yeah. it's, so you don't know what's coming next. It's It seemed like it was going to be a lot more frantic. Because uh, everyone's going at the same time. Yeah, but it's not. There's enough time thinking about it. It was just, it was a lot of fun. Once you have all your cards in sequence, you say stop and everyone stops and you score for, for where you have them. It was a fun, it's a, yeah. it was a fantastic little filler game. Like really, really liked it. Speaking of like ascending and, and just numbers and cards, Mind Up, this was a new one from Painosaurus. I believe it was just released... I Maybe think it's, it's coming, coming out, out. It's coming out soon. We did um, photography for it. Yeah, and this one, it, it's that same type of kind of mm -hmm. your the mind up is when you have cards in the middle and you're bidding kind of on the cards there, and then those cards move up, and that's the next set you're bidding on, yeah. and you get points because of where they're at in your little tableau you have. I really enjoyed that one yeah. more than I thought I would. And Far a big, big part of it is you're trying to predict in your bids what other people mm -hmm. are going to bid to because where you land in the in the sequence of bids is the card that you take. So if you need the middle card, you need you can't just bid super high and pick the card you want. Right. The the bid that you make where you land in it determines the card. So if you need the middle the middle card, you need to bid above the lowest person and below the high. So it's I remember it's, one time really I needed the um, the last card, but I I only had I think I only had two different cards, mm -hmm. and you keep the last one, and I won it with a twenty five, and I was yeah. shocked. Anyways, far away, um, another one we got for photography. I really like this one. The theme and the art is just fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but this one was fun. It's kind of an interesting way of like set collecting. Yeah. Um, you're kind of you're you're right. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, yeah. Collecting you're, you're icons, on, icons the cards. on the cards, and then you've got different things, and then when you mm -hmm. add your points, so you're building up to eight cards eight in cards. this little line, but you add points, you flip them over, and then you go backwards to, yeah, you, to tally the points. It's really interesting. You play from left to right, and you score from right to left. So you're playing cards that have icons that have scoring parameters and prerequisites on them. Mm -hmm. But once you start scoring, you can only score the card you're scoring and the cards to the right of yep. it. So the last card you have doesn't have any icons to the right of it to score. So she's back. I don't remember where I was, uh, but so when you score your last card, I think it was around there. When you score your last card, you don't have anything to the right of it to score. So as you're building, you're, you are laying out things to score and you have to like achieve those 
but then also make sure that your last cards also have yeah. ways to score. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of different ways to get those icons. Balance. Yeah, I like but it. it's cool because you don't like get to score all of your cards together. You have to really strategically place the cards that you want to score. Yeah. We're gonna go with this one, time division, and you get to choose which way you think is up. Yeah. So the this. back of the box is always on correctly. Oh, there you go. This is made there you go. Way. Okay, time division. This is from CGE, and there. What is the the bear? Uh, Heidelbar. Heidelbar games. Yep. This is a strictly two player game, mm -hmm. and you're playing through different eras of time. Yeah. I think is the there's three different yeah. factions, I guess. Yep. And it's one of those games where you you put a card down, and based on what you play, someone gets to choose, um, has, has control over who does what. So you're going to play either bank the card that you play for points or use it for its ability. Peyton absolutely destroys cannot, us at this game. Yeah, we, I've we can't yet beat to win it because it's, every time Peyton's like, let's play Time Division. I'm like, of course you want to play Time Division. I can't beat so you. Because good at it. It's, it's <laughs> such a good little game. It's very strategic. Um yeah, it's, it's a great, probably one of our top two-player games that we played last year. Speaking of winning, you beat me for the first time in my game. In Radlands, it's been way too long since we played this. Is this, oh, the whole thing's upside down, because you put the top back on the box. Yes, I did. It's been way too long since we played it. Really this love it. Like Yes, definitely understand why we got this in the first place, and, and just the, it's... Now it's the box game. is much smaller. It's just it's cards, but we have the play mats in yeah, here. Yeah, so the that's deluxe version of the big, of the play the mats. big, and it's just gorgeous. Yep. And it's a great little battle game. Fa fantastic two-player game. Deserves all the hype that it gets. Yeah. We'll have more on that too. Now, trick draw. This mm -hmm. is the Magic Flippin' Cowboys yes. from Good Games, and it's a trick. It's a trick game. No, right? it's 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 not trick taking. Not trick taking, but you are you're playing tricks yeah. on. Right? Kind of not tricks in the I way that most it. people would associate okay. tricks with okay. cards. Okay. You're playing abilities. So yeah. you have cards that you can either play face down for points, face up for abilities. You're going to flip cards. You're going to score based on other cards you have. Um, it's a it's a really cool, it's got a cool end game trigger because once someone get ten, gets 10 points, everyone else gets another turn. But if two players tie for the highest score, they're eliminated from the game. So... There can in that last round can be some Wait, we like didn't, we didn't, we didn't get there because you I, got cards I, I that won. trigger the game. Weird. Like I was just reading the abilities on the card and it said if you have this card and if you also have this card or this card, then you win. And I yeah. was like, okay. So I laid it down. I was like, I win. Yeah. It was very abrupt and everyone around was like, oh, I was gonna. Yeah, the first time we had not seen those cards before. No, they had somehow not come out in another game that I can remember. I was, so that was a surprise. But it's a am super. I doing this right? It's a really easy game to teach because you get like either play a card and do what it says or play it for a point. Like yeah, that's it was you, very easy. you teach it that way and just get to know the cards and their abilities mm -hmm. at, at a later time. It's easier to learn the game playing it. I think yes, it, yeah, you definitely want to like, like you just want to dive into the yeah, game because it tells you on the cards right, what they do. Right. And that's there's no like external rules other than like how many cards you draw and all that. This one's on upside down again. Well, we're um, just gonna leave it. Fine. River Valley Glassworks. This is coming from All Play later in the spring. I believe they're doing a Kickstarter for a deluxe version. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one that we previewed at PAX Unplugged. Think Azul. Azul meets some other stuff. Now that's how that's how they represented it to us. Yeah. Like if you like Azul, I didn't say anything about that to the boys. As soon as we were done playing with them, mm -hmm. they were like, "Oh, it's like Azul. I liked it." And I was like, "Okay, well there you go." Yeah, you're collecting glass gems, trying to make sets of it, trying to collect. But your so drafting you're, is very similar to Azul. Yeah, drafting is similar to Azul, but you're mm -hmm. stacking your gems in columns and you score based mm -hmm. on like how many rows you fill up and your tallest columns, but the farther to the left they are, the lead, the less valuable they are. Yeah, it's like a market. Really strategic in how you're placing and where you're placing the gems that you collect, because you do it, they're organized by color. Yeah. So I'm really excited to see more come out about this. We'll definitely have more on that um, as it gets closer to the Kickstarter. Now a game out. that we finally played, that one. This one, we have had, We've wanted to play this for a while, and then we purchased it. Devin bought it for us. It Devin was, it bought it gift. for us. Oh, okay. And then we finally played it. Now, I noticed ours is very faded. All of the ones at Game Goblins were like that. I wonder if they were in the sun. Yeah, I wonder. And they're not in the sun at the store, but they were like, I noticed when I was there yesterday that all of the ones were like that. So and we've had this for six months, so I don't know if that's a, a bad print run, affects the game. Not at all. 
No, no. Components of the game weren't right. reached at all, but. I but yeah. liked the puzzle. Mm-hmm. It's a puzzly tile game. I didn't think I was going to like it for some reason. I just had this like. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. And then I played it and I was like, it was way puzzlier than I thought. And I liked that. It kind of felt like a solo game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't mind that. Yeah, Usually I only, don't like solo games that you're playing with people. The only real but. player interaction is if oh, someone no. takes the cats that you want and people are playing end game condition cards that are going to be scored for everybody. Yeah, I think so. So you want to come over here? Okay, you come over here to me. That was Isla Cats. Really glad um, that we played it. The boys really enjoyed it as well. Yeah. Thunder Road Vendetta with Carnage at Devil's Run. We played this. I had played this with the boys. We absolutely loved it. Finally got Allison to play. This is one of, like, it's just so chaotic. It really is. It felt like um, pinball. At one point, yeah, it's, because it was like, okay, you got on, your car got on mine, and then we rolled, and then I shot you this way, and then yeah. that one rolled, and that shot you this way, and then that one rolled. It was like, doom, 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 doom. It felt like a yeah, and it's machine. One of my favorite gaming memories came from this in December, whenever we played this with Peyton and Jared the first time. Oh, they had a blast. Because you're, well, you're knocking other cars off. When you run into other cars, you could do something bad to them, or you could do something bad to yourself. Yeah. And he was gonna and ram, hunters. and he was gonna ram Jared at the edge of the map. And I was like, "Are you sure you want to do that?" And he said, "Sticks in my mind." He said, "You know, I don't really care if I win. I just want to see what happens." <laughs> and it was so, so it was it was such a great like it creates the experience where it's so chaotic and fun that you really don't like the chaos is more fun or as fun as. As winning. So, yeah, it's a fantastic game. Highly recommend it. Played it with Car- Carnage at Devil's Run. And that adds fire, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Okay. Event Car. This is from Resonim Games. Mm-hmm. Um, this is actually their print. Um, it's a, it's yeah, not it's a prototype, a, but it's. It's a production, production preview. print, yeah. We took photos of it. Mm-hmm. That's that's why we have but it. But he's opening it because... Well, I'm not going to get it oh, all you're not. The concept of the game is that how you open the box is also how you open the cards. They're already ready for you. Well, I guess <laughs> she's, I she's a mad woman. Yeah, it's a really cool concept. Of the, I don't know if I've seen any other games Yeah, so you play like it comes way. out of the box. This flips Be out. With it. Oh, and it literally... This, like flips open and all of That's these again you got to keep them where they go but it's like when you organize it, you just roll it back up so you're not having to sort out a deck of cards mm-hmm. and figure out what goes where it really all packs easy up to pack up yep. and sort um so when you're done you just put everything where it goes you roll the box up it goes back in the box but essentially you're trying to collect um you're trying to collect more and more cards. It's kind of a deck builder. Like you're gonna draw up a hand. Some cards let you draw their cards. It is definitely a deck builder. It is a deck builder, but your goal is to make runs of cards out of your hand that can either be like sequential with number or color. So I could play a blue two and then a blue 11 and then a yellow 11 and a yellow one. So you're trying to get cards that are, and add cards that are gonna help you get more uh, sequences and get rid of cards that are gonna yeah, you can pull yeah. some cards, just like a deck builder. Yeah. I really, I really like the. It's just a fun, it. yeah, fun little puzzle with it. Um, Lunar Rush. This one we had, we played for the first time two years ago at Gamma. Well, we saw it. We never actually played it. Did we not? Okay. No, this I was a I, review I think, copy. I think I got yeah. shown like a round, maybe, because right. it felt really familiar when we sat it down at the table and played it. Yeah, I liked it. It's a pick up and deliver ish. Like, no, mm. no. Kind of, it is. Well, it's like an engine, and then your resource. You're, you're producing sending, resources. Sending yeah. things. Um, you're going to the moon, producing resources, and then selling them on the earth. And this yes. this kind of cycle here. There's some bidding. The- you're trying to, you're bidding on the order in which you place your ships to go to and from the moon. Uh, the faster the ship goes, the less it can carry. So it's really trying to optimize getting ships to the moon with supplies when you're going to need them, and then having ships that can bring back um, enough stuff so that you can bring it back to Earth and sell it. It's one that we played and immediately wanted to play it again. Oh, yeah. Played it with some friends. Like, it's it's really... We played a, it a, with a friend and his wife, and she doesn't like, um, like... Space games. Space games, and she really Half the game it. takes place on Earth, so... And that's kind of... Kind of. Oh, you're a, on the moon. A third of the game takes place on Earth. But it was one that we really... 
very quickly wanted to play again um, we'll and still want to play. Them. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to do a playthrough of this one, so keep an eye out for it. But really, really pleased with it. Uh, Sagrada Artisans is these... She's telling you. Yes, it's so pretty, isn't it? You say, wow. You say, wow, it's so pretty. Sagrada this... Artisans, we have enjoyed this so much. We started it over winter break with the boys, and we it's just one of those relaxing um, games. You get to color. Yeah. You're drafting dice just like Sagrada and, and putting them on your plate, but your or your your mat, but you're coloring them yeah. in. And it's just it's so nice and colorful. And yeah. there's a fun story. I'm not really sure how I feel about the the guy writing the stories between it's, each. It's got a and the legacy. He's guy, a little goofy. Uh, we're not gonna judge on that. <laughs> The, ga goofy. the gameplay is great. It's Sagrada with colored pencils. Uh, there is more to color than just your little puzzle. Yes, you can doodle while other people are drafting. I've never cared less that someone <laughs> is taking a long time on their That's turn because I'm just sitting there coloring away in my little book until someone says, hey, it's your turn. And then I take my turn and I do it. The, the ability to do colored pencils versus dice means that it's not in a grid. There's really cool shapes. There's a lot of surprises in the box. There's a ton of a ton of envelopes, a ton of like variability and things added as there would be in a legacy game. Yeah, and little secrets yeah. that you find and things yeah. like that. Really loving it. I'm gonna leave that on the table. She is Three games that we don't have physically oh, that's here. Right. We have Aqua from the Op that we played a few games of. We that's can't talk about Tuesday. that until the sixth. So we'll have more information on that on the sixth. Uh, finally played Tapestry at game night with Devin. Here, hold my coffee. So yes. I can keep the baby from jumping the off the baby. table. Really yes, like that. finally played Tapestry. That's she didn't another. play it. She drew pictures of Frozen characters for a kid's birthday party <laughs> instead. All the girls. It was six players. And obviously, yeah. I think Tapestry only plays up to five. But it would have taken a very long time. We started the game at nine, I we, think. You guys started the game. and Carlton started the game. We played three nine. players. And we still didn't get home until very late. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if, if the rest of us had played, it would have just been even longer. So we yeah. watched them play, and the girls drew Frozen characters for Danny's uh, birthday party. Yeah. Um, and then we also don't have Metro Runner. That is, it's still on Kickstarter, correct? Yeah. But we have a full review of that, so you can yeah, go so see you that. Yes, you can check that out in our thoughts yeah. there. Um, and have then, not. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, oh, one we did play. Yeah, we played Crokinole. Crokinole. That's fun. We have a dozen plus videos coming out on Crokinole stuff so from when Jeremy many. Tracy was in town uh, making stuff with us. So if you want to get better at Crokinole or learn how to play Crokinole, yeah, yeah, yeah. Be sure to keep an eye out on the channel. We have so much Crokinole content coming out. Is there um, one more game that we don't have? No, nope, not on my list. Okay, this one we wanted. Daniel was like trying to get it to the table last night, but just we so we could play one round, so we could honestly say like we played it in January. We How didn't. Gorgeous is this game. Yeah, Emma is just as excited about it. So yeah, so Galactic Cruise. It's hitting Kickstarter in March. And we're going to have content on this. this is from Kins and Key Games, their first game. Um, I'm excited about some other games that they mm. will have coming out in the next year or two. It is incredible. But this is phenomenal. It's so gorgeous on the table. It is a table hog, but in the best way possible. You're just it's a it's a heavy it's a legitimate. Planning, you're building your cruise ships to space. Yeah. And it's very um, you're it's just a planning yeah. game. If it's you like a, those type of it's a heavy Euro worker type, placement yes. game. Like it's a heavy it's worker really placement Euro game. Like you're if that's your jam, you're gonna love it. Uh, yeah. So this is everything that we played in January. We'll be back with another one of these on March first, hopefully. So yeah, thank you so much <laughs> no, for we watching. Won't because we're gonna be going no, to that, Vienna. on like the fourth. Okay. We'll have time. Okay. So oh, yeah. Oh, no don't coffee spill for that you. on the games. You're about to take a nap. Yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being patient with us and with Emma. Uh, I think that's everything. If you have any questions about any of these games, please let us know. Can you say, Can you bye? say bye? Say bye-bye. Say bye. Bye. See you later. Bye. She's like, y'all, there's no Emma, one here. can you wait? There we go. There we go. Bye. Bye, you guys. <laughs> Yay, we're done.